This week's Torah portion is Nitzavim and Vayelech, Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 9, to chapter 31, verse 30. This is a week of a double portion. The two portions are read together on the Shabbat before Rosh Hashanah, with four weeks uh, uh, less weeks as this is a non-leap year. Some portions are doubled up so we can finish the Torah on Simchat Torah. Nitzavim, you stand this day, opens up as Moses starts his third and final discourse to the new generation of Israelites that will settle the Promised Land. Moses addresses everyone, tribal chiefs, elders, officials, and all the other men. He also includes children, wives, and strangers from wood choppers and water drawers. They are all entering the covenant of Hashem. This is the covenant Hashem made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and now makes with all of them. Moses also says that God makes this covenant with those present as well as those not present. This can mean either those yet to be born are also under the covenant or that the souls of every Jew ever born was there as well. He warns them that there, some may be considering following idols, but God will punish them. People may also decide to follow their hearts or their eyes instead of the mitzvah. <laughs> People will see the punishment that God meted out to the idol-worshipping apostates, as well as the whole community if they sin too. <coughs> Excuse me. Other peoples will see that they were punished for breaking the covenant. In verse 27, we have a lamet. That's the Hebrew letter that's the equivalent of the L in English, in the word cast them or put them in another land. Large letters are used as a symbol or to draw attention to that word and the concept it conveys. Since a lamed is numerically 30, it may mean that for their sins, the Israelites will be exiled for 30 generations. In verse 28, the Hebrew words that mean for us and our children have dots over them. Dots over letters in the Torah are, are used to call attention to that phrase. Since the text talks about hidden sins, which we may not even know we're committing. We need to be especially diligent in our actions and follow the mitzvah. Chapter 30 assures the Israelites that when they finally repent, Hashem will restore all their possessions and take them back wholeheartedly. Moses encourages them to heed those words and tells them to obey or not to obey is their choice. If you walk in God's ways, you will thrive. Nitzavim ends with Moses reminding the Israelites to love God. Vayelech starts with chapter 31 with Moses' epilogue. He tells them he is 120 years old and can no longer be active. He will not cross the Jordan with them, but is turning it over to Joshua, his protege and successor. He assures them that God will lead them into the promised land and help wipe out their enemies by delivering them to the Israelites. In verse 7, he tells them to be strong and resolute. Moses wrote down these teachings and gave them to the Levites and Kohanes. In verse 10, Moses tells them to observe the seventh year as forgiving debts. Sukkot of the seventh year will also be a year of public reading of Torah. In verse 14, God tells Moses it is now his time to die and appoint Joshua as his successor. God also tells Moses to write down those words since the Israelites may go astray and forget God when they thrive. Those words will serve as a reminder. In verse 34, he put the writing with the Levites to place it beside the ark. Vayelech ends with Moses reciting the, word, the words to the congregation of Israel.